right, ready, set, mend. So we are talking in this tutorial about stains and little holes and actually moving beyond the patches on jeans and holes in sweaters. And one of the things that Carly really reminded me is sometimes we think of mending as being really linear. I've got a stain, I've got a hole, something's wrong with something that I love. I'm going to fix it. But you can also kind of go ooh, a little bit global and think about mending a garment to make it something that you love to wear more or that you have um, a piece, I don't know where it is, but, but a piece of linen or something like that 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 you don't know what to do with and you can put it on something else. So here's just some examples. Here's a gray dress. It's, you know, it fits nice. And then what Carly did here is she just cut out some fabric. That's the running stitch. We talked about that. A little more complicated there, chain stitch, but made a jellyfish. And you can be really free. In here, you can see where the edges are a little ravelly. It's like, so what? It looks really cool. So you, it's just a way to really change a garment. Um, this is a shirt that I love, and I literally wore it to, to it. And um, it definitely has the uh, uh, hem was frayed and I had all these little kind of like worn patches. So I just took some knit material that had a bird and um, I don't even think I interfaced this. I can't remember. Yeah, I did interface that and uh, put it down and there's the blanket stitch. And here I just cut some more knit and I just put it around the hem. You can see I kind of just did this double thing. I just cut it. I didn't measure and that's the running stitch right there. And it's it's down on the bottom here. And I got another little bird going on here. And honestly, like I love this shirt that I already loved. Like so it's much really more. pretty. Now. I can't wait. I, I'm gonna do a little bit. I gotta do some more, but I mean I'm just like, I love this shirt. So that is kind of just to kind of get you inspired to mend. And today we're really gonna be talking about covering up a little hole or a little stain. We're going back to blanket stitch and running stitch and we're going to show you a little bit of bead work too which is like the running stitch but uh, stabbing a bead on and then putting it back down. So here's a, a stain. Some I've got all this already done and then Carly said oh there's some stains over here and I was like dang really I was. But um, uh, So what we're going to do is I love to look at fabric and think about maybe that you see something that you like. Sorry, I'm going out of the thing. So here's some fabric. And I, I in general, look for shapes that are easy to work with. So I'm not going to pick this because that's like a lot of little stitching. But the mushroom, the rainbow, a bee, they're perfect. When I was looking for this, you know, I was looking here. I was seeing some birds that I could use. So you do need a, a nice pair of scissors. It's way easier. And I heard somebody call it fussy cutting and that literally is what it is. It is fussy cutting. So you wanna find something that you can kind of fussy cut. And when you start, you're not, sorry about that guys. You're gonna, you're gonna fussy cut big. So you're not doing your fussy cutting yet. Your, I'm cutting kind of carefully because you never know what you want to use later on. So there's, there's, I'm going to do this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some interfacing on the back of this and interfacing just kind of makes things a little more stable and strong. And there's the dog. So and stops the fray. Yes. So if you... it, 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 it stops. Oh, 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 Chassie, stop. stop. There's no. no one there. Come on. We're almost done. Now go. And everybody's like, they don't know. Okay, so can we just skip, go back? Keep again? going. So um, it does stop a lot of the fray, and the blanket stitch is a great fray stopper. But when we were looking in some of these, they were interfaced. You can see there. 
But they do. When you wear them, they do get a little this bit. This wasn't double-sided interface, though. I don't think it matters. Oh, okay. It's, still, it's gonna, gonna happen. It's just the nature of washing things and wearing yeah. them. And you know how stuff just, so yeah. But you just, I think you just have to embrace that. And it's, that has actually been one of the biggest journeys for me because I grew up really with structured sewing and like we, it was called home ec in my days. And it was like rules that you followed. And it was so liberating to go someplace. I remember we were in South Africa and I saw, I don't know what it was, frayed seams or unfinished hems. And you're like, what? Like, <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, why do you have to finish a hem with It's a knit. It's not going to ravel. And even it, something like this does ravel. Like we were talking it about. It looks like real seaweed now. <laughs> yeah. And people are going to come up and say, like that, that seaweed you put is ravelly. They're going to be like, oh my God, that's so cool. All right. So, but interfacing, what it does help you do is give a little stability to that other piece of fabric. So I'm super fond of, I don't know what the names are, but the dub, it's, it's like a double-sided interfacing. So if you are going to go buy some in a sewing store, you'd ask for that double-sided interfacing and they could direct you. It has all kinds of different names. So this little bee came from my piece of material and I ironed the interfacing on one side and I'm getting ready to do the other side. And what you do is you, you're going to peel off that. And the cool thing about the double sided is it's sticky. If you could feel it there. So you look. don't have to pin it. And then when you're using small things, man, you just don't want those pins and you can kind of play around with your placement. Now, I might, if I was going to wear this personally, go now put that bee and try it on and see where it was going to be on my boobs. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but yeah. this is a man's shirt, so <laughs> I, they I, still I, have but, boobs. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I could see a woman wearing this shirt. And yeah. I want to be sure that that bee wasn't accentuating my boobs. Yeah. But, and then if you want it to be super permanent, you, you're going to iron it again. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to stitch it. And then a lot of times, maybe when I'm all done, um, I might think about it. Uh, especially if you have a lot of fussy cutting, I'm working on something that I am going to iron, but this bee, I'm not, I wouldn't worry about. Okay. So I've got the bee placed over a stain and then I'm going to do come from the back side. I've got my knot and I'm going to do blanket stitch on this because I've been doing blanket stitch everywhere. I can see those bees aren't even sewn. So I got to look... finish that bee. He's yeah. just got one wing done. He does, but so, and I'm doing the blanket stitch, which we have talked about, and you can go back and find our blog or our videos. Yeah, going into and details you're about just going to go around. But I did want to just add what you can do next is add some beads. And so I did it there, here, and here. I love it on the rainbow. That's I know. Super cute. It's just like, I think I probably did in the pattern too. I'm just going to uh, give the be a little yellow bum i was gonna literally give him a yellow bum so here it is here's my needle it's threaded um are you on the right side or the wrong side right I'm, now i'm up because i want that i want the bead to show up and then i'm just this is just the running stitch there i go and there perfect and so really what we want to do here is just inspire you and in fact, I got so inspired that Carly and I said, we need to make some little kits for people because what if you want to try something and you're like, I don't want to go buy fabric, thread, beads, interfacing. Now I don't want to do it. Needles, and pins, needles, yeah. and iron. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, but listen, I mean, once you get started, it's like a boat. It's, you know, <laughs> our chickens. It's like chickens. You're like, I got to go buy this now. But anyways, this is to get you started, to get you inspired. And our next one is going to be, our next tutorial is going to be specifically about our little, our little kits that literally are super, super cute and super tiny. All right.